generally. So what does it all mean and where do we go from here? Let's bring in Dryden Pence, Chief Investment Officer with Pence Capital Management. Also with us, CNBC contributor Surat Sethi, Managing Partner with DCLA. He is our guest host for the hour. Welcome to both of you. Good to have you here. Dryden, let me begin with you with your thoughts on, on bonds generally. Uh, there's been some talk. I mean, lately you've been paid to keep uh, your maturities very short, whether you're in the Treasury market or elsewhere. Are we getting to the point where it might be time uh, to go out a little farther on the duration curve? Well, I think that we're people are beginning to realize that the interest rate regime is now going to be higher for longer. And therefore, those people have been very, very short, can begin to move out just a little bit because yield curves normalize. We're in this situation where we're now have gone from very inverted to coastally flat. And I think that the realization is that this movement from higher to longer is going to allow people to move out a little bit uh, on the yield curve because, uh, quite frankly, the idea that we're going to have a, a massive move down in 2024 is probably certainly off the table. Surat, what do you think there? Is it, are we getting close to the moment where you would think about going out and lengthening your maturities in, if you hold bonds? So I, I would be careful with how far out you want to go. I think three to five years can work, but you have to be very careful about credit quality if you're talking about corporate bonds. And I think we haven't really seen spreads blow out, meaning we haven't really seen stocks, uh, balance sheets reflect some of the refinancing coming, some of the higher rates, and a potential slowdown in the economy because that's what the end result is going to be of all this tightening. So when you do go out three to five years, make sure that the credit that you're holding is of high quality and not cyclicals and not companies that are going to have to go back to the market very shortly or that are depending on advertising. So just like when you do stock picking, you've got to be careful on the bond picking side too and know that your spread, the amount, the difference between the Treasury and what you're getting paid for is commensurate to the risk you're taking. Some people might say or might argue or, or might think, well, I can't do that work. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, that's how I would feel as an investor. How would I possibly know? So would I be safe enough buying you know, some kind of broad exposure and hoping that even if I lose 10 or 20 percent at the margin because of defaults, I still might come out ahead? Yeah, and I think that's when you get a short-term diversified bond fund for that amount but you have to be careful because it does have volatility so it's you know i would we prefer owning the individuals but totally. to your point there or if you don't think the risk is enough you know just buy a short-term treasury fund or something to that effect where you're not taking credit quality do you think people should go into their fidelity accounts just look for apple bond q-sips and just low just load up on that i mean well, so the spread over treasuries, you know, is not that commensurate to take the risk. True. Apple's not going to be out of business. So that, that's kind of where you're going to have to play that, that, that amount. But, a, 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 you know, an A-rated, highly B-rated companies that are 50, 60 over 60 basis points over the treasury, those are you can be comfortable with. So you can do it with high quality companies. Just don't go into companies that think, oh, I'm getting 9% for two years. Well, the bond market is normally more right than the equity market. So it's telling you something that probably much more risk there than it, there is. Dryden, what do you think of stocks and, and the, the so-called earnings recession that we may have just exited? Well, I think the earnings recession is over, and we've looked at, you had the Magnificent Seven the first part of the year, and now we're looking uh, more towards the 493, because the earnings recession is pretty much over. You're going to see continued uh, growth in earnings uh, throughout the market that we believe through the end of the year and then into next year. Uh, so I think the economy is fairly strong. Uh, it's going to continue to be that way, and I think that's going to be supportive for the rest of the market, that 493, to begin to have increase in earnings. Uh, and we think the recession's over. I mean, the Magnificent Seven ended their earnings recession three or four quarters ago. Now the rest of the market is, earn is uh, doing that, and we can move forward to, we think, a pretty broadening, uh, more positive, more strengthening uh, value of prices. You have three stock picks uh, in my notes. One is Amazon. One is Raytheon and the other is Exxon. They're all in an on. I guess maybe that's the theme. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's really more about Christmas and Congress and conflict. We think Christmas is coming up. It's going to be good. Consumers ha have money. And Amazon is really roughly a, you know, 40 or 50 percent of the money that goes into e-commerce. So Amazon should do well during the Christmas period of time. When you look at Congress, they've, they're going to continue to support these wars that we have in terms of Ukraine and uh, and Israel, so we think Raytheon is a very strong company there. They have about 
about 2.6 times uh, their 2023 earnings and just their backlog. So they're part of Iron Dome, they're part of uh, the systems that, and Javelin that were systems are using in Crane. So, so Congress is gonna continue to fund that even though they're a little dysfunctional right now. And then when you look at conflict, it's pushed up oil prices. And because of that, we like Exxon. Uh, and the reason, I mean, if you think about it, Exxon's really the fourth largest producer in the world now that they had their merger. So when you think about that, Exxon has tremendous uh, oil production and oil in the uh, 85 to 90 mm -hmm. dollar barrel range makes them a lot of profits. All right, Dryden, thank you for being with us today. Dryden Pence and Surat, we get to have you for the whole hour, so we're glad about that. It'd be a yeah. great trivia question. What other, you know, names end in O? -N? That's all I'm yeah. thinking about. Exxon, Amazon, Raytheon, did we cover them all? Foxconn. Foxconn, Fox yeah. <laughs> Let's get